Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone. I am Vaseem Anwar from Lahore, Pakistan. We are yet again back with an exciting and informative series of interviews, uh, starting with one of the most dynamic men in on passive. You all must have seen him on webinars and events. A man who possesses ample knowledge and carry a vision of bringing change in the lives of people. He is doctor. He is from USA. We are lucky enough to get uh, his learning and experiences. He is none other than Doctor John or John or John Van. We cordially welcome, sir. You are here, sir. How are you? Good afternoon to you, uh, Mr. Wazim, and. Uh... Uh, uh, good afternoon from the United States and good evening to you. I'm I'm really blessed to be with you. I hope that you're all well and everything is fine with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, uh, uh, I want to know, uh, uh, first of all, my first question is, uh, where, where are you from uh, exactly? Because uh, my mostly guests live in USA and Canada, but originally from another country. Like uh, uh, Mr. Charles Osong, Comfort, and many guests came. So, are you origi originally from USA or some other country? Oh, great! Thank you for that question. Uh, let me really start. I I call I describe myself as a global citizen, uh, and uh, I am lucky in the fact that I was born in uh, Cameroon, that is in Africa. Yes. Uh, I'll talk to you a bit about Cameroon, and then. I actually, at the age of about uh, 18 or 19 years, I left Cameroon and I went to the United Kingdom, to England, where I studied. Uh, and then I spent uh, like the first half of my or first portion of my working life in England before I got transferred by one of the companies that I worked with to the United States. So I can say that I have spent about a third of my life in three different countries. And um, the first one, obviously, being Cameroon, where I was born, where my family uh, presently resides. And Cameroon, again, is uh, one of the countries in the central part of Africa. It's one of two countries that are officially bilingual, French and English. And um, a lot of people know them because of soccer, which is one of the national sports. And they, they describe the... They describe the country as Africa in miniature because if you look at the geography of the country, you probably see almost every part of the African geography from the Sahara Desert all the way to the tropical rainforests in one country going through the savannah. Uh, it's a country of about 472,000 square um, kilometers and about 27 million people. As I said, um, it's a, been a country that for a very long time has enjoyed a lot of peace and stability, uh, except unfortunately for the last five years, there have been some armed conflict that has left um, a lot of people displaced and really putting a lot of stress in the, in the country. Uh, so I did my earlier part of my growing up there. And then when I went um, past high school, and I was going to towards the university. I was one of those lucky people that had like a scholarship to go and study in the United Kingdom. I, I was in Birmingham. I did engineering. I did a first degree. I did a PhD program and I did a, an MBA master's in business administration, as well as a postdoctoral research program in Birmingham. Um, England, I I look at that as a country that provided me with a lot of education, more than just the academic education, because it was in England that I actually got to interact with people outside of Cameroon. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to live with and interact with people from, obviously from Afri other countries in Africa, from uh, other countries in Europe, other countries in Asia. I actually had um, one of my very good uh, friends while I was a student in Birmingham, uh, Aston University in Birmingham. His name was Ryan. He told us that his name was Mr. Bright and he was from Lahore. I realized that is where you're coming from. So um, uh, I don't know whether the idea that he kept telling us that Ryan means bright. So that's why he made us call him Mr. Bright. 
um, and, and, and then I, I finished, I started working in England. I got married in England. We had kids, some of our kids in England. And the company that I was working with finally transferred me to the United States in New, uh, and I have based in New Jersey. That, and that's where I've been um, for the last, maybe almost getting to 20 years. Great, 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 sir. Excellent, sir. Sir, uh, th thanks for this detail uh, answers and uh, we uh, would glad to know about Cameroon. Uh, of course, uh, many leaders, uh, on passive, many leaders created from Cameroon, like Charles Osong Cam mm -hmm. and many others. And of course, your wife, Dr. Patient, as well. So uh, uh, that's great, sir. Sir, uh, tell me about your family uh, if you want to know, uh, if you want to tell about this. Okay, yes. Uh, talking about my family, um, I am starting from who I am. I'm the one out of uh, six uh, in my from my parents uh, who are both deceased, the only boy. So um, I have I have mainly sisters. Uh, I I grew up with them, and my sisters. Some of them, uh, most of them, are back in Cameroon, and uh, I uh, I am here in the United in the United States. I'm married. You talked about my wife, Doctor Patience. Uh, we have five children. The oldest one, she has, um, she she she's a psychologist. So and she's uh, got a master's degree in psychology, and she's doing a, a part time PhD program now. Our son had his own master's in uh, digital communication. He's working. Our middle daughter, uh, she just luckily uh, completed uh, her medical school from the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, she's doing her. Um, a residency in Connecticut here in the United States. And we have a set of um, twin girls that are just graduated high school and they're heading to the university this year. Apart from th that very close family, um, I have a large extended family that is um, actually mainly in Cameroon. Most of, some of them are in, in, in Europe, some of them here in America. But if I wanna talk about my family, I mentioned my friend Ryan, we have lost contact, but I, but when I was in the United Kingdom, I ended up having friends from different parts of the world that started extending my family to those areas and have given me the opportunity to visit different countries. But when you talk about myself and my family now, I see myself as somebody who is starting to have a very big a growing family. And that family includes somebody like you and all the people in on passive that I'm blessed to meet on a daily basis. Oh, excellent, sir. Mashallah, very educated family you have and, uh, and beautiful kids you have. So uh, happy to know about uh, Ryan. I, I think his name is Rihan. Uh, maybe, okay. Maybe some. Maybe he modernized it when we were in England yes. to make it yes. easy yes. for us. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think Rihan, Rihan name is bright. So Rihan. So uh, some people uh, uh, say according to their pronunciation, Ryan or something. So. Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, so that's good, sir. And sir, um, uh, to, you told me about uh, your degree and uh, education, sir. Would you like to uh, introduce yourself in details? Where have you been working throughout these years? Uh, what is your expertise uh, in details uh, through the from Cameroon to now United States? Of course, you you was in uh, United Kingdom too. So, how was your journey before or past? So, yes, it's been an interesting and a blessed journey. Uh, in the sense that when I when I left uh, Cameroon after high school, I was very passionate about doing a chemical engineering, and my focus was really to do biochemical engineering. The reason being that if you think about Cameroon, they produce a lot of fresh fruits and they produce a lot of food. But the problem is that just like with a lot of developing countries, you have the planting season and then the season that there is really like, like no food because um, 
everything is either still growing or the harvest has ended. And then during the harvest season, you have a lot of stuff that gets harvested. And because we did not have the way to preserve most of these things, most of them, especially the fresh, fresh fruits, they got damaged. So one of my um, inspirations or one of my aspirations was always to go and learn and then come and see how I could help preserve some of these foods that were being produced so that you can have food all year round. I, and so when I got to England, I got into the engineering and I learned a lot of those um, different uh, aspects. Then I finished, I had the opportunity to do advanced education and do master's in business administration, which I thought was necessary for me to understand how business runs. Um, but then when I, um, at the point that I was getting ready to go back to Cameroon, uh, it was just during that time when the economy globally was really kind of tight and there were no opportunities for me. However, there was a company in the United Kingdom that were willing to employ me. And so I started working in England initially to, you know, gain a bit more experience with the aim of still going back to go help. Um, but, you know, life has different ways that shapes out and your trajectory that you start may not necessarily be where you end. I started working with this company and I got really lucky because it gave me the opportunity to visit and work with people in a lot of countries. So while I was working in England with uh, the pharmaceutical company, they had uh, uh, branches in Ireland. So I had I had the opportunity to go work in Ireland. They had branches in, um, in, in uh, the Netherlands, in Germany, in France, uh, in Singapore. So I ended up and as also in China. So I ended up having the opportunity to go out there and actually see um, how people are in different areas. And it, it really created in me that mindset that we are all one human body. You know, we can have religious, we can have political, we can have racial um, boundaries that we artificially create. But at the bottom line, we are all one creation with blood flowing in our bodies. And then when I got to the, uh, the, they had the opportunity that the company transferred me to New Jersey in the United States. Again, I got into the area I had, a, I, I was working as a process engineer and a project manager. And I ended up working on a lot of projects again in Canada, in Mexico, in different parts of the United States. Um, in Puerto Rico, and I also worked remotely with projects that were based in places like Brazil and Argentina. Again, giving me a better understanding of humanity until um, Unpassive found me as a blessing. And now when I think about my journey going forward, I am actually thinking about not only using those engineering aspects that I had acquired, but for the last 10 years, I had branched from engineering and started providing financial advising and, and became almost like a financial professional, providing financial advice to a lot of people because I found out that most of our people do not they work a lot, but they do not actually understand how money works. So I have been helping to educate them to see how they can actually make best of their money. And that is something which I have sort of um, been doing with on passive. Maybe I can touch on that a bit later. But looking at what my next phase of my work journey looks like, my prayer and my hope is that I am. I remain healthy, and on passive gives me the opportunity to actually go down to other areas. You hear that I mentioned a lot of countries in Europe, in Asia, and in uh, America that I've worked, but I have not had the opportunity to work in Africa, even though I'm from Africa. So my dream now is to leverage on passive and go to different areas in Africa and be able to contribute towards lifting of humanity. 
great sir excellent sir excellent sir uh, sir uh, we all know doctor patients uh, your wife is uh, another uh, uh, proud founder of on passive and great uh, speaker uh, mm -hmm. inshallah uh, we will uh, see in next in any interview doctor patients so how was your first uh, interaction with uh, doctor patients how uh, 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 did you met in uh, united kingdom you, as you told yes so um when we were in the united kingdom we were um we are all students um i i went to the united kingdom before her and we were students we had um we had a cameroonian student community yeah. the reason that that community was created initially was because some of us who went maybe earlier when we got there we did not have anybody who could mentor us or basically show us the way or tell us how to adjust into the adjust in the new society so we had the student union and the student union started serving that purpose of welcoming all those new students as well as helping them network so when she got to the united kingdom i was already um there studying and um we we actually met at one of the student union events uh and um you know when we have student union events like the particular event actually took place in london and when we were done when we leave from our different towns and we go to london most of the time after the event you know we we'll probably all go sleep in one house or we go stay together and again socialize and at that point i I, I saw her like somebody who was uh, extremely mature, very family oriented, and there were there were a lot of um, similarities uh, between us. And during the course of our student life and interactions, we got to know each other a lot better. And that's when um, we got to a point of actually um, getting to go back to Cameroon and meet the family and express our interest about getting married. When we got the family's blessings, then we got married. Excellent, sir. Excellent. Uh, you both look uh, beautiful together, sir. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, beautiful family. And, uh, sir, my next question is, uh, uh, we, we would like to know about your journey with On Passive, including when and how did you join? How it has changed your personal and professional life, sir? Wow, I hope we have enough time for this one. Yes. <laughs> anyway, yes. um, sure. sometimes you are searching for something and then you struggle to find it. And by divine intervention, the thing finds you. I did not know any idea. I had no clue. I did not even know anything existed about or concerning on passive. So in after you know in the united states we have thanksgiving normally like the third week in november and um in november 2020 towards the end of november 2020 i was unlucky to actually contact covid um 19 and this is the moment that i when you talk about whatever my wife has done throughout I'm, I'm just amazed as to how much knowledge and research she had done about how to take care of somebody with COVID even during the time that everybody was learning about COVID she would pick information from all different places and put them together so I actually had an, a, a situation where someone came to visit us I I um, I got exposed to that person. I had COVID and I was isolated in one part of the house and everybody else stayed away from me. And um, sometime around the 2nd of December, 2020, I was, I was lying in that my isolated corner. Um, she, she, she stood at the distance and she told me that uh, one of her sisters has sent her a WhatsApp about some company called Unpassive and that she looked at it and she just has this belief that 
this is going to be something big. And that um, all they were asking for was $97. And uh, she has signed up um, herself. And she said, are you going to come in? And I said, what do I need to do? And she said, well, you need an email. I said, you know my email address. And I said, you go ahead, sign me up. And um, so patients went ahead, signed me up on the 3rd of December, 2020 in Unpassive. I didn't even ask her what, the, what it was about. All I knew was she said, it looks like something that is going to be big. I still don't know what actually gave her that initial motivation. But the irony is that the sister that had sent her the WhatsApp is somebody who just receives all these WhatsApp things and forwards them and never really bothers reading them. And sometimes when we get all these forwarded WhatsApp, you know, you just think, oh, not another piece of, you know, junk and don't read it. So somehow through a divine intervention, she read that WhatsApp. Somehow it actually um, resonated with her. And after she had actually gone ahead and she, she signed me up and I told her what password to use since I was sitting on that, my isolated corner. Um, I then asked her, I said, what was this thing all about? And she said, it's $97. I said, okay, yeah, $97 is not going to kill us, but what's it about? And at that point, she said, well, they said it's an IT company that is coming up. And um, if we look at the IT companies, we know like Google, like Facebook, um, and so on. Even if this doesn't work, it's $97. So she then called the sister that has sent her, maybe she will tell you the story herself. She called this same sister and started explaining to her that, hey, what is this that you sent to me? And she said, I don't know. I just got it and I forwarded it to you. He said, go ahead and actually sign up for it. I don't even think this lady signed up for Unpassive till much later when she kept hammering and hammering and hammering. But when I just looked at it initially, um, I remember I attended one um, one webinar where uh, Mr. Mufare was present. And when I attended that webinar, I saw that there were people from all over the world that were involved in on passive. And I just told myself that these people cannot be involved in on passive if this was not something really, really real and powerful. So um, I started um, getting involved, but at a very low level during the, red, the first half of 2020, all I did with Unpassive was um, one, we agreed that the Zoom links that I used to use primarily for my business, who were going to be using it on uh, some of the days to do uh, uh, Unpassive webinars. But she actually, and a, a few of her friends, they were the ones who were like going out there and actually trying to listen to Unpassive at the corporate webinars and then come and share them to people within our communities for two reasons. One, most of the people that went to the corporate webinars were either too shy to put their hands up and ask a question. Two, some of them had a lot of data problems and could not, you know, they kept dropping in and dropping out. And the other reason is that even some of them that had data, they 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 were not um, technologically savvy. And I think you 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 probably experienced the same thing with um, our brothers and sisters in Pakistan that not a lot of us are computer or tech or IT literate. So the whole idea that they decided was that they were gonna spend a lot of time and explain or even helping people to figure out how do you even log into an email? How do you even <laughs> sign up? Your... So going back to basics of teaching people how to even log in, let alone to be able to go to Unpassive. And it was not until, um, I'll say the middle of last year that I decided to actually 
move up from my back row that I was doing supporting the dream team to actually getting involved in their meetings. I was always like providing logistic support in the back. But once I decided in the middle of last year to become uh, more active, I decided that there were, in addition to just helping people log in, there were some areas that I think most of our people need to understand and get ready because this is a massive thing coming down to us and people need to actually get their mindsets ready. Uh, Mr. Wazim, you know that most of the time when our CEO has any presentations, Mr. Mufare spends almost the first half of the meetings talking about readiness, about how we should change our mindsets, but most of us do not get it. So one of the things that at my own le little level, I have sort of been trying to contribute is really helping the people within our communities. And there are actually three different uh, groups of webinars that work together. There's the dream team, there's the, um, the, uh, the deep dive team, as well as the on passive Niger team. We coordinate and work together. But one of the things that with my financial literacy background, I have been working on helping people to understand is to get that financial readiness. Because we know that a lot of people have won millions in lottery and in a very short time, those people have either died or they've gone broke because they never really prepared. What we have been struggling to do is to prepare the people because we know that when the apples or the money or the greens, whatever people call it, they start coming, we don't want people not to be able to use it to actually improve themselves and improve their community. So one of the things that has been a blessing to me, and I hope I have been helping bless other people, is to really focus on this idea of getting our mindsets, especially our financial mindsets ready. I hope I didn't take too long. I, I want you. No, sir. No, sir. I was listening very. Uh, I uh, could not notice the time. Uh, excellent, sir. Excellent, sir. Sir, uh, uh, excellent journey you have on uh, passive. Sir, uh, actually, this is my favorite question. Everyone, every guest has own story to join on passive. So uh, it is amazing. Uh, sir, how do you see on passive after launch? Uh, how is it going to impact the lives of founder, customers, and businesses all around the world? Wow. After lunch, as long as everybody that is in on passive has done their own little bit to even acquire or understand just 10% of the mindset of our tremendous leader, Mr. Ash Mufare, this opportunity is going to change the world in a way that we can never, never, never think about it. Why I'm saying this is, if you look at, we are 1.448 million of us now in on passive. After launch, this is the first company that has the potential of changing the lives of these many people after lunch. This is the only company, not even thinking about the unicorn status, that is out there actually thinking about the others more than it is thinking about itself. And our CEO has mentioned that over and over and over. So, how do I see on passive changing the lives of all the founders here? It's gonna change our lives in different levels. The first level is us, the founders. Each and every one of us, whether we are full-time workers or we are full-time business people, as long as we have caught the on passive dream and we can just dream about what this real opportunity is, it is going to change our lives financially. It's going to change our relationships 
drastically because me and you did not know each other until before on passive. There are a million of us that we have become a family and millions will come. When Ash made a statement once that on passive has the potential to stop wars, it did not resonate with me initially. But once I begin to understand you as a brother, once each and every one of us begins to understand each other as a brother and sister, then we start to see things from the other person's point of view and the little nonsense that creates conflicts, we can actually start taking them down. At a family or community level, Unpassive is going to change our lives because through Unpassive, we are going to not only be able to increase our own ways of living, we will also be able to uplift our individual families. I can throw a couple of examples here. I see that between my wife and myself, during the last 20 or 30 years, we have spent a lot of time supporting our family members helping them with education or helping them financially because we had our what we perceive as our limited means. With Unpassive, it gives us that option to be able to stretch it further and start focusing outside our family. It has actually started changing our mindsets because I did mention to you earlier that in Cameroon, we are beginning to, we have, of, uh, an armed conflict that has resulted in um, people being displaced. Last year, my wife had to actually um, take about 28 or 30 um, kids that are at school age. And we had to sort of sponsor them through primary school and even support them with books, uniforms, their fees, and so on, out of pocket. There are people, some of those children have the potential to become the president, so senators, so businessmen, but they don't have those means now. With the opportunity that Unpassive is providing to us, I see endless possibilities for those kids. We're not only thinking about helping them through primary or elementary school, but support each of those children as far as they can go. And then when it comes to the bigger communities, there are projects that I don't even know whether I would have even been able to think about them were they not, were, were it not for this opportunity that Unpassive has granted to us. So I see that as long as um, we have that mindset, the mindset that our CEO said. And one statement that he made during one during a seminar, sometimes in 2020, that just keeps replaying in my head is that he's, when he said that if Mother Theresa had the resources, what would she have been able to do? So when you ask me the question, what do I see on passive doing? I want each and every one of us to develop that Mother Teresa mindset or that Mother Teresa type of thinking. And then we are blessed with Mr. Ash Mufari providing us with the means. And then it is up to us now to take it to wherever we want to take it. Excellent, sir. So you explained very well, sir. And uh, sir, uh, you you talk about Mr. Ash. Um, uh, Mr. Ash, uh, our CEO, the genius, the, the mastermind of this project. Uh, Mr. Ash, talk about uh, mindset, talk about value. So, uh, so uh, what is your opinion about him? We all know uh, we have a good opinion, but uh, we wa want to know from you. You know, uh, from the very from the very first webinar that I I attended, and I saw him. First of all, I saw him as somebody who is genuine and who really cares for humanity. 
after that first meeting, the thing that kept going through my mind is, why is he doing this? Because um, there are lots of friends that we have invited into on Passive, and a few of them have told us that, oh, if this guy actually thinks he has a good product, he can go get a venture capitalist and they will fund this project and he will be successful. Mr. Mufere has told us over and over that it is not the money he is after. When I think about it and I keep asking what actually other than some sort of God-given divine or whatever you call it, inspiration had descended on him to allow him to take on this opportunity or to uh, take on this uh, project. I sit there and I ask myself, will I, could I actually do something like this? Put the money aside. Could I actually go through, because I mean, I think the last webinar, Mr. Mufare told us about how much pain he has had to go through in order to move us there. It would have been very easy for Mr. Mufare to just set up his small business or even go out there, get loans from some banks or get some um, venture capitalists to pump in money and he generates on passive and becomes one of the billionaires that are in this world. But he chose to share his wealth. He chose to share this opportunity with people like us who absolutely do not deserve it in any way. Um, when I say absolutely do not deserve it is because I don't think that I have the qualifications to actually be an, a part owner or a founder in a, in, a, in a unicorn IT company plus more products to come. So when I look at Mr. Mufare and my opinion of him is just that he is a God sent disciple to come and help humanity. And all that we can do to support him, because we cannot support him financially, we've not been able to pay for any of the costs, is to really just pray for him, to support him by picking pieces of this vision and running with them. Because if we do that, then Together, we are going to help really achieve that dream of lifting humanity. But as an individual, I have worked in corporate America for about 20 plus years. And I can tell you that I actually went to executive levels. But I will also tell you that I never ever actually had a sit down with the CEO where he would just be talking to everybody as a brother, as a sister, as a colleague. It takes a unique individual to be able to do that. Most corporate CEOs, if you are lucky, you will see them at some corporate Zoom or corporate breathing where they're talking just to the guys who are up there. And that's why I say those of us who are in on passive, we have the opportunity that we have a CEO of the soon to be largest company in the world that is willing to come take his time, sit down and tell everybody, my name is Ash Mufari, I'm your friend, and saying it genuinely, and you feel that friendship because of the way he talks to us. So that is, I, I see him as a friend, I see him as a brother we've not met, but that is really the opinion that every single day I keep reinforcing about our CEO. True saying, sir. Uh, ex uh, excellent, sir. Uh, this is the first CEO uh, I have ever seen. I, I have ever seen who uh, talk about mutual benefit and humanity instead of uh, business uh, like other business uh, CEO. So. Uh, mm -hmm. He proved himself uh, when he uh, when he started this company in ninety seven dollar the foundership price and increased the product but never increased the price of ninety seven dollar because mm -hmm. he want to give the uh, 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 relaxation to founders he don't want to put the burden of uh, founders because 
uh, you know the mostly people are poor they can't afford and uh, recently he announced the package uh, future package the founder will pay uh, and uh, he also relieved the in these packages because uh, once he once he, he he told in webinar he uh, he always think uh, how how can i relieve uh, the founder recording package so he uh, he did it and uh, that's great and recently he, he gave the many ideas to yaman uh, deserving uh, founders mm. so that's great oh, and uh, normally uh, if you join any company and company uh, add anything uh, they the company demand money uh, because you are stuck in company you you forced to pay the that money but uh, he didn't ask an uh, additional money and uh, decides the $97 this thing great sir so sir uh, 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 we have heard many products many digital products of uh, on passive so what is your favorite product and why you like it i know this is, uh, question is very difficult every product uh, is uh, has its own importance it's like a company so what is your first uh, priority uh, product oh boy I am I'm sorry I am going to disappoint you by not by saying that I do not have a favorite product but I have like three products that are so close and dear to me in my heart um and sorry that I'm going to talk about the three uh, the first one is o academy and why I I am in love with o academy is when I started telling you about my story I told you that after high school, I had the opportunity to be given a scholarship to go and study in England. I was not the only quote unquote smart kid that wrote the exams that led to that scholarship. There were a lot of other students that could not go and the government had to just send about 10 or 20 of us because that's all they could afford. Think of what Academy is going to do. If we had Academy at that point, would it have been necessary to select only 10 of us to go and study or would it have been possible to provide that opportunity for everyone who has the means? I am just thinking here that there were lots of much smarter guys that probably would have achieved a lot more than some of us who did not have that opportunity. And I see this one product as leveling the playing field, not only um, within uh, some of us, the less developed countries, but even amongst the developed countries. And then I, I liked the the O the the O Connect product. Again, thanks to Zoom, we are able to have uh, this conference. Uh, but if you actually look at what is coming out with uh, O Connect. I just cannot wait. I'm, I'm like, the day that they say it's out here, I don't know whether I'm going to be singing or whatever, because uh, forget about the cost of paying for Zoom. Just looking at the features that we have for this um, All Connect, they, 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 they sort of excite me. Oh boy, I cannot even, I, I just have to contain my excitement. But if you were really to push me and say, what is the one product that on passive is bringing that really um, is my favorite. I would say it's all blessed. Why is it all blessed? Because I am a living example of blessings that I have received that maybe I don't think I necessarily deserve. All blessed is on passive as far as I'm concerned. Apart from on uh, uh, bless, on passive becomes more like another big business, but not, not in the technical sense of the word, but this is the heart of on passive. If we take out O bless, then the idea of lifting up humanity is starts not to become really real. It is to me the key differentiator that places on passive on its own lane and every other company in the world in a separate lane. Why 
am I saying this? And I'm going to touch and see how I, why I feel so, because I think once we, the unperceivance, have initially, as Mr. Ash Mufari said, filled our tanks, the day that we leave this world, we're not going to carry any money with us. In fact, you don't even have control over your body when you're gone. Some other person is in charge. So the only thing that we can do is utilize a vehicle as Obless to actually transform the world. And this is a genius of a product. That's why it is my most favorite. Great, sir. Great, sir. So you talk about Oblast, uh, no doubt Oblast is uh, everyone's first priority and uh, great product uh, is not, uh, as we all know, uh, Mr. Ash Mukhare told in one, one webinar, is not uh, uh, only charity platform like others. It, it, is just, it will some different. So, uh, so I want to know from you how Oblast will impact on humanity. So can you explain this? Right. Thank you for that. Um, first and foremost, 1.448 um, million of us are going to be impacted directly. And if each and every one of us uses the platform of OBLESS to only impact one person, just one person, that becomes almost 3 million people. And they are not 3 million people in the United States. They are not 3 million people in Europe. They are not only 3 million people in Pakistan or in Cameroon, but they are 3 million people that are going to be impacted globally. Um, there is something that they call the multiplier effect, which basically says, if you take like a dollar today and I go buy something with it, I end up having a dollar and the person that I bought the thing for has a dollar. And if that person takes another, that his dollar spends to buy another thing, at the end of the day, I have a dollar's worth of something. You have a dollar. That other person has a dollar. That dollar has gone three times. If we do nothing else but just help one person, and that person is blessed to be able to help another person, and then it becomes a snowball effect. And then we would change humanity. However, I see that apart from this being the vision of our CEO to bless and uplift humanity, each and every one of us will have the opportunity through all bless, as I indicated earlier, to bless our communities and to bless um, our families and why not our countries and the world. Let me tell you some reasons why Personally, I see Obless and why I put it in as a first choice. My elder sister back in Cameroon, along with four or five other women, they decided about 10 or 15 years ago when the HIV AIDS was affecting a lot of people. There were lots of widows that were left without husbands and a lot of children that were left orphans because their parents died from HIV. These women are all retired women. And what they decided to do was that, what if we collect part of our pension and help to empower these widows and also support the orphans? For 20 years, these women would go and buy exercise books for the kids they would go and they would um, actually um, con they, they would actually commit to employing some of these widows to even come clean their houses for one or twice a week so that these women had the dignity of earning an income. And when I was when I saw this and she was sending her flyer and saying we should help raise money, you know, here in America and so on. I am not very good at raising funds. So what we tend to do is occasionally send them something to help them. Can you imagine how using all bless we could actually empower not only this team, but we can empower the widows and the orphans 
to once more feel that they are human beings. That one is a personal one to me. And then I did mention to you about the 30 kids that we are sponsoring in elementary school. One of the things that between my wife and I, when she started the whole thing, I didn't say it out, but I kept thinking at elementary school, you know, if you spend $5,000 or $10,000, it can probably cover 10, 20 kids. But if two or three of those children go to secondary school, the cost will go up a huge lot. If all 20 of them graduate to go to secondary school, we financially will not be able to sustain them. So when I said on passive came like a blessing to me and I start seeing the opportunities that the impacts that um, something like O Bless can get to help them, it becomes more and more impactful and very personal. I'll tell you a third one. Uh, maybe she'll talk about it herself, but my wife just returned from Nigeria with another founder member where they went for a medical outreach to meet with refugees and provide health care for them. At the same time, we're talking about creating capacity building, helping them to be able to fend for themselves rather than wait for handouts every time because the, the corruptness of all the eight programs now is that we would collect the aid and just throw it over the fence and then the people will use it and tomorrow they will need some more aid. What if we can create some sustainable things like create farms for them, create, uh, um, they, they're trying to buy sewing machines for them so they can sew clothes and sell and generate money and improve their lifestyle. Those are some of the things that we see all blessed helping to, um, to achieve. And if I even go back to being personal, um, in March this year, I visited Cameroon. And when I went there, I experienced the impact of global warming and the change of climate firsthand. There were rivers that I couldn't actually wade through because the rivers were flowing so high, so, so fast, that nobody ventured to go through because they would drown. These rivers had dried down to the riverbed. When we were young, we used to go about half a kilometer to one kilometer to go carry water. Now people are traveling five, six, seven kilometers to get drinking water because the, 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 uh, the rivers have all dried. Um, people have cut all trees and used them for firewood. And so every place now is deforested. And you get the fact that because people who cannot go very far are now drinking water from little puddles, we have um, typhoid and cholera now have become a very endemic. Can you see now, Mr. Wazim, what will happen if we are able to provide just a good drinking water to people, how that is going to change their lives? If we are able to provide water for people to be able to create, to do some irrigation and produce farm, uh, produce some for themselves, how that's going to change life. Our CEO told us to think big and to dream big. These are some of my own little dreams that sometimes I sit down and I dream about them. And if each and every one of us has these dreams and we have a vehicle like all oh, blessed through on passive, just imagine what we can do to the world in the next decade or two. Excellent, sir. Excellent, sir. Very detailed and informative uh, answers uh, uh, from your side. Uh, and uh, you have a good heart like uh, other on passivians, sir. So, Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, my next question is, uh, uh, we have seen the uh, massive uh, marketing campaign uh, ran in Dubai and Burj Khalifa. What do you think about the impact it has left overall the standing uh, of on passive? And did you uh, feel any kind of change in terms of people coming and asking about the company? First of all, uh, 
the, the marketing campaigns in Dubai actually started by having a big impact on me. Actually seeing, you know, it's like sometimes if you are building a house and you are inside a house fixing different sides of the wall, um, you do not see the beauty of your house until you actually stand a far distance and look at what has been done. When I saw those um, uh, those projections on the Bush Khalifa and the ice ring and so on, I had goosebumps because I was just sitting there like, oh my God, I am part of this. So it started with me before thinking about, oh, by the way, there are other people watching it. And where I, I have had not a lot of people, but I had one person that um I had that I talked to about on passive. And um the person told me that um the I don't know whether this it was a video that they saw or they actually they, because they did not go through they, they traveled through Dubai but somebody told them about uh some company that is advertising in Dubai and uh was trying to remember the name. I said, it's on passive. I said, it's a company I've been telling you about. They said, oh, wow. So they started producing and you guys making money yet? And I said, I said, oh, if you don't, you just don't know what we have gained from being there. So taking it back, the, 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 the marketing campaigns, I see that um, this is really where the genius of our CEO comes in. I know I'm kind of diverting, but when you ask about those marketing campaigns, OnPassive is going to be provide producing and selling digital products within an ecosystem that are going to be subscription as a service-based product. So if you think about it, Mr. Wazim, you are sitting there and you want to use a software and I come along and I say, I want you to subscribe and be using this software and be paying me a monthly subscription. Obviously, a lot of people are going to say, where does that software come from? If I turn around and say, oh, it's produced by Microsoft or Apple or Google, people are going to say, okay, maybe, yeah. But if somebody did not, first of all, know about OnPassive, what they're going to do is, mm, maybe I'll try it and they'll not think about it. So what I see our CEO has done is he's trying to, through those marketing campaigns, they're building that brand image in everybody's mind. I remember Mr. Mufari saying one uh, time during his uh, webinar that the only person, once who go through the marketing campaigns, the only person that will not know or hear about on passive is somebody who is living uh, under a rock. So right now, the whole world now is seeing this on passive. They're seeing this on passive and they're saying, okay, this company is going to change the internet and so on. It's not really resonating with them. Some of them are seeing it, but once we go live and people start seeing some of those products and testing them and they see the tremendous, um, uh, the, the, the disruptive technology, the AI that is driving it, the above market value capability of those products. And then they link them back to OnPassive, the company that they have been seeing but not really experiencing. You see what that combination of those two things is going to do. When I, when I look at it and I said, wow, we in OnPassive are blessed and we have a genius of a CEO who is doing the marketing campaign. And it's not only those ones in Dubai, but the, the, the others that he's promised us are coming, as well as some of those meet and greets that have been happening either in the UK or in Germany or in different parts of the world. Those are beginning to sensitize people. And I'm sure that a few people who have seen on passive more than once, they're just waiting. And the day that they see something come about, come out bearing the on passive name, they'll be curious to find out. And that's, that's what makes me think is the reason why our CEO tells us that we will be the haunted. Wonderful, wonderful, sir. That's, you explained very well, sir. Very detailed answer. 
and uh, i'm getting uh, knowledge as well and sir uh, the last question as we all know uh, on passive uh, foundership uh, has been closed forever so uh, what do you see uh, coming um, month in coming phase in on passive well the on passive founder as we rarely say ha is closed and is closed forever um <laughs> but it's kind of funny because there were some people that I spoke to that were kind of um, disappointed in on passive. In I mean, again, because they don't know what they don't know, they were disappointed because some of them heard about on passive and they thought this thing should have been launched because they don't know what the products are. They've not been engaged, but and and that gave us the opportunity for many of us who would have missed the boat to know about on passive. Now. The unpassive foundership position has ended. We, the lucky 1.448 million people, we have a mission now. Again, we come in and they tell us that you don't have to do anything. Unpassive will do 100% for you. Yes, that's true. But if any of us has a dream that is bigger than this, and then they will not just sit and wait for unpassive to do it for us. Two reasons. One, there are some of us who want to be able to achieve our dreams faster and sooner. And the second reason is that there are some of us who still have people that we want to bless with the opportunity out there. And there are the, the, the best way to bless somebody with the, that opportunity will be to invite them in as a reseller. Because if you think of all the IT products that we use today, not a single one of them do we actually get to get a financial benefit from being involved. Unpassive is giving us the opportunity to be able to bless other people by making them resellers where they will have their own website, AI will drive traffic to, and those people will be able to get a commission from that pro from those products, as well as also have the opportunity to use those products. So now that foundership position is finished, let's not all fold our arms. Let's do three things. First thing, let's spend every free time that we have to learn about our business. This is very important because many of us have joined on passive, just like you go buy the stock of uh, Apple or Amazon or Google or something and just expect that you get some dividends. I want us to change our mindsets because this as our CEO and all the other leaders in on passive have told us over and over and over, this is our own independent business. You have the opportunity to be able to brand your web uh, portal, give it your own business name that you choose or you accept the one that OnPassive is going to suggest to you. So if this is your business, and I remember um, we had a webinar and Mr. Michael Williams came to it and he, he made a statement. He said, if somebody gave you a check for a million dollars, are you just going to leave it lying somewhere or you're going to watch over it? You're going to make sure it goes into the right bank account and all that stuff. We have been given a million dollar business, multi-million dollars because generations to come will still benefit. So it is your business. So the first thing we need to do is know your business. Spend time in your back office to see what is going on. Go to your website and read about the products because the more we understand what our products are able to do, the more we'll be able to share it with others and bless them. The second thing I would say that we need to do is, I think I've talked about this about three times, to get our mindsets ready. We are going to be faced with what again, I think, uh, I think it was Michael Williams said it with a financial tsunami. And 
I will hate to see any person with an unpassive fail like the 90% of people who win the lottery because 90% of the people that win the lottery, they become either broke in a couple of months. Some of them even kill themselves because they were not ready. So we need to not only change our mindsets from an employee to business owner, but we also need to understand how money works and what are the things that we will be able to do with that money so that we can one, achieve our dreams and help our CEO achieve the dreams that he had set up by inviting us to take part in. The last thing that I will say that um, we do is really to be super, 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 super patient and just enjoy the process. If we look at what has happened between 2020, when on passive, uh, we had a couple of products that we playing around um, in our back offices. And now when we actually have this uh, marketing campaigns going out into the world, then they must, that must give us some confidence that things are going right. We have an African saying that the patient dog eats the fattest bone. Don't go rushing and rushing and being impatient because our CEO and other leaders have told us over and over, it's a done deal. Just enjoy the process. Be part of the process. Feel the blessings every day because this is a blessing opportunity and we are blessed to be on, in, on passive. And then while you are enjoying the process, just keep thinking about all those people that you reached out to who refused to listen to you. Think about all those people that you forgot because that is where you will start the blessing. I hope this was helpful and I really thank you for asking this question. Wonderful, sir. Excellent, sir. Excellent. Sir, very motivational and informative answers. And um, in last, sir, any, any message... Uh, for uh, founders, especially for Pakistani founders? Well, we are all in it together. And, in, and the good news is that once you're in, you win. We are in it to win it. What I will tell all our brothers in Pakistan, I don't think you are any different from our brothers in any of the African countries, is that we have we are probably um, those of us in what I'll call the third world or developing countries. We probably have the bigger mission to actually go out and uplift humanity. It means then there that I normally make this as a joke uh, to my friends. I said, you don't want to be the only rich person down in your village or in your street because everyone else will be jealous at you and, and then life would be tough for you. So let's sort of start thinking about how we're going to be a blessing to other people because our CEO has actually given us a blessing. Let's start, we already have it. Don't say when is it coming because as he says, it's a done deal. What I'll tell everybody is look at it as you are my brother, you are my sister, how can I help you? with this opportunity that I have been given. Because if we go out there and we are able to take this God-given gift and also be able to bless others, we will leave the world a better place than how we found it. So this message, again, is not only for um, our brothers in Pakistan, but for everybody. But specifically for you, uh, Mr. Wasim, I really want to thank you. I know you are a man on a mission. I know you have also had your own struggles that you have people that maybe are struggling technologically. They cannot log in. They cannot even sign up. They, can, they don't have the data to be able to listen to the webinars. Something like this that you are creating that gives them the opportunity to be able to listen to other viewpoints at their own time 
I want to really thank you for taking this effort. This is the true on passive spirit. You are devoting your time to help the people within your community. And I think if we get more and more people that are willing to go out and bless others as our CEO has done, then that is our mission here. I really want to thank you for this opportunity once more. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your kind word. And uh, it was wonderful interview session with you. Uh, inshallah, I'll see you in next and any coming webinar or interview session. So uh, we are so in it to win it and see you in next session. Bye-bye. Thank you very much and be, be blessed. Thank you very much.